Hey guys, so today I wanna to talk about my overall returns in Robinhood, and I always say that I'm transparent, and I wanna show this because a lot of you guys have been asking me to show my all-time history, and it's actually really interesting because I didn't start with Robinhood. I've had other brokerage accounts like TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, and etc. I have not solely traded in just Robinhood. Robinhood has been one of those brokerage accounts that I later opened up because of its simplicity. And I'm not sponsored by Robinhood or anything. It doesn't matter to me which brokerage I use. I can in fact use any brokerage. But I wanna talk about my all time history because I think it's pretty important to kind of reveal what I've been making. And the thing is about this portfolio, I started in the middle of my trading journey. So in many ways, this portfolio is, you know, pretty good in terms of returns because a lot of the mistakes that I made in my first three years were in my TD Ameritrade portfolio. And also another thing is I've deposited some money into this portfolio. So in other ways, this portfolio actually did a lot better because it wasn't always at 1.83 million. In fact, I added you know about $400,000. So if you actually think about it, I have more than doubled my money here in you know the past few years. And that has all come from me using option trading, of course. And yeah, I did have some pretty big spikes in my portfolio and that was due to Tesla. And again, just based on transparency, I wanna go to my Tesla history a little bit because I wanna show you some of the things that I have been doing with Tesla back in the older days because I was really heavily trading options with it. And it may be hard for me to show you all of it because you know it's been a significant amount of time. But if I scroll back to, let's say, 2022 no i think it was 2021 there was quite a lot of times where in 2020 i was buying tesla 407 at 523 even at 800 so i was chasing this stock a little bit and it's not not good <laughs> not good when i started to chase it that is not an ideal situation and as you can see i was buying it very heavily, very, very heavily. But I was trying to wait, so I would give it periods of time where I wouldn't really like buy it right away because there's something called dollar cost averaging. And if you have $100,000, let's say, you don't wanna just dump it right into the market. You wanna buy it in different spurts of time, right? Like one week. At Goldman Sachs, basically, when someone brought in like 100 mil, they would do 10 mil a week for like 10 weeks, let's say. So I was just accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. And then I did some selling, some panic selling, unfortunately. But then a lot of what I was doing was also, you know, selling put options. So I was selling put options, sold another put option, another put option. Looks like I did a couple call credit spreads, more call credit spreads. But essentially what I was doing was a lot of spreads on Tesla. So that's still what I'm doing right now. If you look at, um, well actually I'm doing short iron condors at the moment. So if you look at my current Tesla position, um, let me take a look. Uh, so it's, it's up $450 and I'm currently doing an iron condor. But before what I was doing, and I'll be honest, and I've said this many times, and I don't call it luck, but I had 100,000 that I turned into $700,000 by doing Tesla bullish, you know, whether it was leaps, I did a few different strategies. I did the poor man's covered call, I did leaps, so I bought call options that were about a year out. I also did bull call spreads. So with bull call spreads, you can double your money. And, you know, let me just show you what a bull call spread looks like. If you're really positive on a stock, say you think Tesla's gonna rise for sure in a short amount of time, so let's say, um, let's just say January 5th, okay? If you're watching this future, it's the same thought process, same logic, okay? So say that you think a stock's gonna go up, so you would buy in um, right at the money, right? So Tesla's currently at 252. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy 252 strike, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and sell the 257 and a half, okay? So this right here, as you can see, you can spend $223 and you can make $277, okay? So you can essentially double your money and this is just in 12 days. In just 12 days, you can double your money. So you can see how I did a 7X return and how I just showed you my all-time history. I'm up over $800,000 in my portfolio, All right, That's no smoke and mirrors. $800,000 is you know, what I have made in just this portfolio. And I've also traded in a couple of other portfolios. I've had pretty much all the brokerage accounts. I've tried them all and I don't really have a preference. It doesn't really matter to me. So you do your own research there, but in just this account, I made $800,000. And that was honestly, a lot of it was Tesla, but I've also done very well by avoiding bad stocks. So a lot of people, you know, they, they've had Lucid, they've had Rivian, they've had other stocks that or you know, Tattooed Chef. They had other stocks that were recommended by Kathy Wood or other YouTubers. And something I'm really proud of is that I've never looked left or right. You know, I'm very focused on my mission. I know what I want I'm in all areas of my life. And I never look to the sides and get off of the course that I'm on. 
So for me, with trading, I've never looked at you know penny stocks or or any of these nonsense stocks. It doesn't matter what other YouTubers say. It doesn't matter if anyone other than God comes down and says you know this is the stock to buy. Even if Warren Buffett started promoting a stock, it doesn't matter to me. I know what I want to invest in, and I know what makes sense for me. So I'm really proud of that because it's really easy to make a lot of money with options, but it's also easy to lose a lot of money with options. And if you're not having the most consistent results, by the way, I am a coach, and recently I've started taking my own phone calls. So in the first link in the description, it is a free consultation to learn more about my coaching, my trades, my community, and my Discord. And I will personally guarantee that I will take that call myself, not my team. There are very limited amount of spots though, so make sure you go ahead and schedule your call. There may not be any spots, so you may have to just wait. Now, for the bull call spread strategy, this is a strategy that I did utilize for Tesla amongst other technology companies. Back when I was trading a little bit riskier, I was using more buying strategies. If you have a smaller portfolio, it does actually make sense to use buying strategies because you can kind of supercharge your growth in your portfolio. That is not how you get consistent results, but that is how you can get big results. Now, you wanna make sure that you are younger. If you are older, like a majority of my clients who are software engineers, IT professionals, then you don't wanna do buying strategies. I'm telling you, it's not worth it. Buying strategies are very risky, very high growth, and instead, I would recommend selling options and running the wheel strategy or just selling put options or covered calls. In fact, you can even do spreads. Spreads, though, should be credit spreads. Now, a credit spread is when you're opening up a smaller position, but you are collecting income. It's really important to actually collect income and have a consistent cash flow rather than betting on a stock doing something in a specific amount of time. Now, here's a clip of the best video and the best advice that I have around selling options. Your retirement goal should be to be debt-free and own your own home outright before you retire, so that way you can enjoy a stress-free retirement without having monthly mortgage payments, or with option income that is three times your mortgage payment. When I'm selling these put options because I believe in the long-term value of the underlying stock that I'm selling put options on, I am willing to acquire those shares at a lower price if the market falls, and it is not a concern to me. By selling these put options, I'm generating income upfront while only taking on the obligation to buy the stock at a price that I find attractive. So if I sell a $100 put, I can only buy the stock at $100 and I get paid for that. Whenever I open up an option position, in the meantime, I wait it out and I do almost nothing, focusing on work outside of trading, like coaching in my program. Selling put options allows me to profit from time decay and market stability, giving me an edge in various market conditions. Even when the market is not stable, I have the ability to benefit because I sell out of the money options with roughly 20 delta. Of course, it depends on the stock because for a volatile stock like Tesla, it can be wise to go way below 20. For a dividend stock, you can go a lot higher. You can even pick a delta of around 50. And that's because a dividend stock doesn't have that much volatility. So you really wanna squeeze out as much juice from that lemon as possible, whereas a volatile stock, it moves up and down a lot. And for that reason, you wanna go lower delta because in the case that it goes up a lot, you wanna have capital appreciation. You really wanna have a big return on your money. However, if it goes down, since it has so much implied volatility, since the stock is pretty crazy, even a 20 delta option still has a lot of premium to it. These two strategies align with my risk tolerance because I've carefully chosen strike prices and expiration dates that suit my investment goals. And you should carefully get into each and every single position that you choose. I typically like to go one week to four weeks, but I'm also not opposed to going six to eight weeks or even three months out if you're a busy professional. If you get into a position properly, you won't have to do much, if anything at all, to manage the position. And that's one of the biggest secrets that I have. A lot of people ask me, Henry, how do I take profits? How do I manage a position? How do I close a position? Well, the research shows, and from my experience, when I hold an option position all the way until expiration, not only do I have to do a lot less work, but I also usually get the 
biggest raw return. What I mean is I get the biggest return possible. What I mean by raw is I'm not accounting for volatility. Now, of course, holding an option position until expiration could give you some more volatility. And in many cases, my students and clients are deciding to close a position if it's down 50% or if it's up 50%. If it's down 25% in some cases, I have students that are closing that position. That is really good for risk management, but something that's good for risk management doesn't necessarily mean that you get the biggest return. For me, I'd rather practice safe risk management by having 10 to 15 positions in my portfolio, but whenever I open up a position, I do leave it alone because I wanted to make the maximum amount of money when I sell both puts and covered calls. You guys can always comment below, but I'm serious. Common comments is how do you get out and how do you close for a profit? You don't have to close to sell a put position because there's really only two things that can happen, okay? The first thing is if the stock goes below your put price, okay? Here's your put strike price. If it goes below, you don't have to actually start panicking because if you like this stock to begin with and you should only sell puts when you like the stock, then the worst that can happen is you have to buy 100 shares of that stock. That's totally okay because as we're talking about covered calls, as soon as you have this stock, as soon as you own it, you can go ahead and start generating money from this stock as well. Now, one of the biggest things is when this uh, strike price, if the stock goes way below, can you still sell covered calls? Well, that's an iffy one, okay? If it goes really far down, in some cases, you might just wanna wait. You wanna wait for that stock to recover. And again, you like this stock, right? You think it's gonna recover. It's a good, high quality company. So in most cases, it will recover. Now, if it just goes down a little bit, then that's the perfect scenario. In fact, sometimes on Fridays, I might get put a stock, say at $100, um, because it goes down to 99 on Friday. But on Monday morning, it's back to $101. And that is one of the best positions to be in when you sell a put option, you get assigned, and then that Monday of market open, that stock is going back up. In those cases, maybe I would just leave it alone. I would let the momentum um, ride back higher. And um, at some point you do have to decide, I wanna sell some covered calls and make some income on the stock that I have. I view selling puts as a way to take advantage of the market's overreactions or fear-driven price drops, potentially leading to substantial gains. But even 3% per month, that's fantastic. That's going to compound over time. And if you look at some of the best investors, Warren Buffett, they're only getting 20% returns per year or even less in some cases. So if I'm able to make 3% per month, sticking to my bread and butter basics, covered call, sell put, I'm a very happy camper because that's going to compound. And of course you should have other sources of income that you're putting back into your portfolio. Now choosing underlying assets or stocks with strong fundamentals and a history of stability, now that's also a really good tactic. This reduces the chances of a significant loss, and also just, again, picking stocks that you like, even if they do have a significant loss, you should never be in a position where you're really worried, because in most cases, the stock market does come back and recover. Covered calls are very similar in terms of profitability to selling put options. In fact, they are basically cousins, and I dare you, you can see right here that it actually looks the same to have a covered call versus a sell put. They have the same risk profile. Any stock that you own 100 shares of, you can now generate income using covered calls. Call option sellers benefit as time passes and the option decays in value. And this way, the seller basically makes money every single day as the option is open. That's why selling options makes money every single day that it decays, you're earning more money because if you were to buy it back, you would have a gain on your hands. One big confusion is when you do a covered call, you may see your call option in the red. Now I've seen this many, many times for myself, for my students. This is not a concern and you should not panic because as the stock rises, the short call will look like it's losing a lot of money. And in theory, it is if you were to buy it back. But if you're not gonna buy it back and you're just gonna let your stock sell off, then that red amount doesn't really matter. But the stock is also growing and that's why you also have a lot of protection. So even if this covered call option seems to be losing $1,000, your stock is probably up way more than 1,000, maybe 1,200 or $1,300. So they more than compensate for themselves. So you don't have to worry about seeing red when you're doing covered calls at all. Selling call options is a fantastic exit strategy and that's actually one of the biggest things that I use covered calls for. I wanna decide when I wanna exit a stock. I sell calls not only to generate income, 
but get out of his stock at a much higher predetermined price by using call options. Selling call options brings in premium and I get to control the price that I want to sell the stock at. So at the very worst, I just lose my shares at a higher price that I picked. Again, everything is a very controlled environment when I'm trading options. Too many people, there's many myths out there that options are super risky. They are very risky if you're an option buyer, but if you're sticking to option selling, that's where you can see passive income, that's where you can see consistent results. And again, maybe you're not gonna make a million dollars overnight, but I'm going for those stable long-term results that lead to retirement. And even with a portfolio of $305,000, that's where you can start generating significant amounts of money. Now, I wouldn't like quit your job because again, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. You just never know what's going to happen in the market. Nobody can predict it. But with $305,000, you can see some really crazy returns. And from there, as you build up, it's only getting safer and safer to the point where you're able to retire and focus on this full time. And when I say full time, I just mean a couple hours a week. When an investor sells a covered call, they're essentially agreeing to sell their shares of a stock at a predetermined price known as a strike price. So when you pick a strike price, it's really important to pick a strike price that you're happy with losing those shares. So say that your average cost is $98.64. Well, if you sell a covered call at $105, you know, you should be happy to basically get rid of that stock at $105, okay? If the stock price rises above that level before the option expires, you know, that's fine as well. You're usually not going to get a sign until the very last day. If the stock price does not rise above the strike price before the option expires, well, the investor keeps the premium. You get to keep the premium anyways, but you get to keep the premium and you get to keep doing this covered call strategy. Now, if it's above, you're gonna lose the shares, you're gonna get assigned on Friday. If you don't wanna lose the shares, what you should do is you should buy back that covered call on Friday, on the last day, okay? You wanna wait until the very last moment because that way, theta or the time value of the option has decayed to the point where it's not really significant anymore. So if you were to buy back, you're only going to lose the amount of money that the option is likely in the money. So for example, say that you sold a $100 covered call and it's now at 105. Well, that option is probably gonna be worth about $5 on that Friday. Now, one of my best strategies is I can buy back that option, which is called rolling, and then opening up a new option. If you wanna learn how to roll, this is literally one of my best secrets and one of my best strategies of all. Rolling is so important because what you can do is if a position is losing money, say for a put option, okay? If it's at $100, you can roll it from 100 down to 95. Okay, now for a covered call, let's say, again, it's at 100 or 105, okay, 105. If it's at 105, you don't wanna lose it at 105, and the stock is at 106, you can move from 105 to 110, okay? Rolling is one of the best things to uh, adjust and correct the position. If you're losing money, you can lose a lot less money. And if you're making money, you can also magnify those returns and make more money. Rolling is the best strategy, and if you wanna learn rolling, this is the video that you have to watch right now.